Hey guys, how are you? All right, so we are going to experiment and play with an idea I got from a video I saw. I think it was Nick the books, Booksmith. I'll link it in the description below and let me go check YouTube, hold on. It was Nick the Booksmith and it's DIY printable glassine and new technique. She, um, at the time of filming this, which is July 11th, she um, posted it a, a week ago. So I got some ideas after watching her video and I'm gonna show you what I got up to and we are going to see the different things I tried using her ideas from her video and what conclusions I came with what came to with what I have. Um, I do recommend before you watch this video any further, go watch hers and show her some love and then come back. All right, let me switch and go to the table. I'll be right back. Okay, after we, I watched her video, my husband and I went to the library and they have a used book sale section, which most libraries have. Most libraries have a used book sale section where there's books that can no longer be lent or they get donations of books they don't have room for or they're not, you know, in this case, this is a dictionary. I, you know, how many dictionaries does a library need in their lending library? So they had this one for sale. I think it was a dollar. So of course I bought it. Did I need it? Not really. Don't tell anybody. Um, but anyway, I bought it because as soon as I saw it, I had Nick's video in mind. And I thought, how perfect is that? This is a traditional um, new college edition American Heritage Dictionary with your traditional thin dictionary paper, which was the key for me. So I took and literally ripped some pieces out of the book and ran them through my printer. That in itself was interesting and I've got some tips for you. Okay, you don't necessarily have to be more careful than that about ripping them out of the dictionary, at least I didn't. One of my tips for you though is don't put more than two of these into your printer at any one time because the printer tends to jam up and the next thing you know you get this. So it didn't like my, I have an HP and HP NV printer. It didn't like that at all. I put like six of them in there. It did not like that. It jammed up. Now, even if one with one or two, if you're having problems with the jamming, take your dictionary page and at the very top, tape it to a piece of standard printer paper and feed that taped edge in first so that when it goes through into your printer, it grabs that taped edge first. It's less likely to um, get jammed up in your printer. So that's my first tip for you. <laughs> um, my Also my tip, I had I readjusted the size of my paper in the program where I had my images on my computer to be more appropriate to the size of my dictionary. You'll have to measure the book that you're using and either set custom settings in your printer on your computer if you can or find a preset set of settings or measurements that closely resemble um, the size of your book paper. Okay, most printers will have some sort of adjustment to hold your paper or whatever you're printing on more firmly. In the case of my HP Envy, it has these little things on the side. If I push one in, it pushes the other side in. I don't want it to be too tight where the paper does that. I want the paper to still lay flat. Um, but I want it to guide it in there more evenly than it would if it was all the way out here, right? So I'm going to just do it just until it touches. That's perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is use my computer behind me and find some digital images to print on those dictionary pages. Now you may be like me and you may have a file folder on your computer full of, um, sorry I keep fiddling with the camera, file folder full of old clip art images back from your scrapbooking days when Dover and other publishers would sell books of clip art with a CD that you could put on your computer and then you could reprint them to use in your scrapbooks. Y'all remember that? I don't know about you, uh, but I still have file folders full of all different kinds of images including botanical images, holiday images, like all kinds. And along with my own digital downloads from my Etsy shop, I have some from Mike Deacon, I have some from Tim Holtz, I have some from the Graphics Fairy. There's lots of places to get digital images, not to mention you can scan your own artwork and print it on the dictionary pages. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, I'm going to try to film this for you. 
So I set up a document in my word processing program. Um, I have an Apple computer, so I have pages. You definitely could do this in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Publisher. The exact details of how to do it, I'm not sure because I have a Mac, um, but I'm sure you all could figure it out. So I'm going to enlarge my image. This is one of those images from the scrapbooking days. Um, and I um, am going to not quite make it the size of the paper. I'm using a B5 size document that works with my dictionary. Um, but it's not exactly right. It's actually a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make the image a little bit smaller um, than the page. Then I'm going to go up here to the top to format image instant alpha, which is the part of pages we use to take out the background color. I don't want it to try to print the background. I just want the flowers. So I'm going to just do that. And that takes that out. Then I'm going to do it here and here. Nope. Not there. Well, that's fine. There. You don't have to do it everywhere, but I just do it. I don't want it to try to print that beige yellowy background on everything. I'm not, I don't really mind if it does it in a few places, but for the most part, I want to leave the dictionary paper the color that they were. And do you have to do this? Probably not, but I, I just, I do just in case. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit done. And this is a big file that I have. I don't know how many pages it is. It's just the last page. So I just wanted to print the last page. So I'm going to go File, Print. And then I'm going to have it. There's 12 pages. So we're going to do 12 to 12. Oops. And print. OK, so any digital images, once you have them, um, on your computer and if you need to you've taken out the background color you can print them on the dictionary paper um, you may have so this one here um, got caught up with let's see where's that oh here it is so these two sheets hang on I'm doing this one handed it's not easy so, so these two pages got caught up and came out of the print printer as one you know, I'm not mad about it, so I'll keep this one and use it as it is. I took this one and I put it back in this side up and printed on it again, and there you go. So whether they're digital downloads from my store, which these are, that is too. Something maybe that you created that, you know, is just for your personal use, which this is. This is one of Mike Deacon's digital downloads. It didn't print perfectly because honestly I was doing like five things at once and I didn't have time to fiddle with the paper size. But how cool is his owl design going to be on this dictionary paper? That is so cool. Or it's one of these other sort of stock images that you've already got from the scrapbooking days on your computer. They all print really well on the paper. So then the next step, because this is an inkjet printer, is to seal them because if you don't, this ink is going to run all over the place when you try to glue it down with anything wet. So I took these two. Hold on, I gotta move some stuff out of the way. Okay, I have these two that kind of got caught in the printer. I've already used a piece of that one, that's why there's a piece missing. I've used it in a project. Um, but I took these two and I sprayed them with. Uh, Spectrafix. Now Spectrafix is a non-aerosol fixative spray. I don't like to use a lot of aerosols because I do have asthma. Spectrafix works pretty well. Um, it did make the ink run a little bit. Mostly you can see it a little bit here on the butterfly wings. It's not too bad actually. And then I took the other two and I just did just wax. So after the Spectrafix was dry then I took Dorland's wax on a brush and covered both the ink side and the back side of the image with this wax. Now why this wax and not beeswax? Because once this wax hardens, it doesn't reactivate uh, like beeswax would. As soon as the beeswax got hot, it would turn liquid. This doesn't do that. Once it's hard, it's hard. It does leave a traditional sort of waxy feeling finish. Um, it didn't add 
a lot of transparency to the paper uh, like Nick, the booksmith had. I was thinking maybe it might, but it didn't add a lot at all, if any. So I have a bunch of these other sheets I've printed. Not that I don't like these. These worked great. I did use this one in a project already. It glued down fabulous. The finish, uh, the feel of the finish that you do get with the wax and a little bit of a, you can see a little bit of a shine, like a, like a semi-gloss. Um, I, I love that. It's just not, it's not super transparent or anything if you want that. So I do have a stack more of these botanical prints and then some of these other things that I just printed. So we're gonna spray some of these and or wax some of these and we will see what happens and I'll be back. And the spray that I'm going to use, the other spray I'm going to use is the same one Nick the Booksmith had. Rust-Oleum American Accents, two times ultra cover, semi-gloss and clear. They make this, this is their like outdoor spray paint and this is just their clear in semi-gloss. They make it into matte, semi-gloss and gloss. I didn't want it matte and I didn't want it too shiny so this will work. Alright, I'll be back. We can let those dry and then see what happens when they are. And I think I have just enough time for that before, before Bob gets home from work and wants to park his car here. So yeah, that's a thing. Okay, as I said before, these are the ones that not only didn't quite make it through the printer, but are um, the ones that had the wax and, the, and two of them had the Spectre Fix. And they have a distinctive sort of waxy appearance. There's a little tiny bit of shine on there. I'm not even sure you're gonna be able to pick it up on camera. A little bit. They worked great once they were waxed and the wax was dry. If you're using door lens, you need to let it dry pretty well um, before you do anything with, with the paper. I would let it dry overnight. Um, and then I actually made um, a paper clip and a tag with this one. Put a paper clip and an artist trading coin. I honestly don't remember, but here's the paper clip. And you can see it in the background here. I used tacky glue. I didn't use anything special to glue it down. And it worked really well. So that's if you have something like Dorland's, it worked really well. I really wanted to try to see if I could get the paper a little bit more uh, transparent. I mean, it's it's thin paper, but it's dictionary paper. It's not going to be like doing this on some of the papers Nick the Booksmith tried. But I wanted to, I really, really wanted to try this. I had to order it because nobody around me had it. Then afterwards I find out that I, Walmart might have it. The hardware store doesn't have it around here. This is very weird. Anyways. So I took these, the rest of these, just now. If you're watching this, you saw the clip where I sprayed these with the spray downstairs in the garage and then let them dry. They only had to dry about 30 minutes. They dried very quickly. Okay, they dried really quickly and you can see, let me grab one of these ones that's not cut up. So I don't even know if you can see the very, very slight shine that's on that from the wax. I'm not even sure you can tell. Can you see it on here? It's much more pronounced and shiny and it's definitely more transparent paper. It's got a very different finish to it much more like vintage glycine paper. And I can see why Nick prefers to do it this way. So I liked it so much I did them all. 
Um, so like I said, you don't have to have this. You could definitely do it with something like Dorland's wax. You probably could do it with uh, whatever other wax you use for your art. Just keep in mind that if it's something like beeswax and you put it on a page and then you go to heat dry it, that beeswax is gonna reconstitute, so to speak. It's gonna melt. And so that's, I don't know what that's gonna do to your work. Uh, Dorland's won't do that. Um, and this is not gonna do that. I generally don't heat stuff too much that I'm collaging, but I mean, it does happen. But this is so cool. Can you see that? And these are all of the different images I had in my stash of things from, you know, God knows where, um, different books that I bought back in the 1980s that had CDs with them. Do y'all remember those? When um, clip art was called clip art because you cut and pasted it onto like newsletters and things. Like cut and paint, that's, yeah, anyway. I know I'm aging myself, but. Um, and this is the one that was of mine that I did for personal use. So cool. And I should say, this is it on the dictionary paper with the um, semi-gloss spray. This is regular printer paper. So this is very cool. And this hasn't been coated or anything. This is Mike's Owl. How cool is that? He might be the tag I have to do today. We're gonna set him over here. Some other images of mine. So I really, if you haven't watched her video yet, go watch it, give it a try. Definitely the Dorlins worked and the Spectra Fix, I would just be careful with it. Oops, because it did make the ink run. Um, it could be me using too much of it, but I, I do, but it worked. I was very, I thought light handed with it. It did run a little bit, but um, it worked. And then once that dried, then I went over it with Dorland's. And the other one, I just used straight Dorland's. I don't really think in the grand scheme of things, it made any difference if I used um, just this or this and this. I don't think it made that much difference in the appearance, the feel, the texture, or the in the ability to, for the ink to stick and not run. Uh, both of them work just fine. This stuff is stinky. You have to do it in an open ventilated area. Definitely wear gloves. If you have a mask, probably wear a mask. I didn't, don't tell anybody. Um, it definitely gives you a finish you don't get with the other things. So there you have it. It is a lot of fun. I am gonna really quickly make a tag and a paper clip and let's see how those turn out with us, shall we?
Hey guys, alrighty. So here are two um, little projects finished with the paper inspired by Nick the Booksmith. The main image, of course, as I've said, is a download from Mike Deacon's shop. I'll try to find it and link it in the description below. I really like this paper. I took some of the plain dictionary paper and did the back, which I usually leave blank like that. Um, and on the paper clip, I usually put a paper, but then I put this white strip of Tyvek. That's Tyvek, by the way. I keep getting questions about that. I was attaching the paper clips um, with glue and a strip of cardstock, but the Tyvek is stronger and is more likely to keep the paper clip on there better and adhere better. Um, and I need to trim that just a little bit. There we are. Oh, and there. Okay, um, so that's t that's what that is. It's a piece of a Tyvek envelope. You know those envelopes you get in the mail that you can't rip open, you have to cut open? Tyvek. Um, so I usually buy a pack of them at the office supply store and I only use them for art for things like this. So these are two cute little projects and I still have this whole stack of papers that I will be using going forward. This is a lot of fun. I would make a big batch of it because it is sort of labor intensive paper to make between uh, printing it and then spraying it or waxing it and then letting it dry and just make yourself a nice stack of it. What I did on my computer is I have a file on the computer for, micro, for Apple, blah, 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 for Apple's program Pages, which is their word processing program. And you can do a little bit of image stuff in it. Anyway, I have a document in there that's about 25 or so pages. And I have just saved these images in a file there for me to print so that I don't have to constantly go hunting for the images. I can go open that file and I can just print the whole file. Um, and when I have an image I want to add to it, I just go add a new page and then I print that new page. Um, but I would just do a whole stack of them, make yourself a file and just print all of them. Again, you need to do just one or two sheets at a time in the printer, so that's kind of a pain too. But it is worth it in the end. I think you get a really interesting piece of paper, an interesting image to look, to look at and use in your art. Um, in, in different ways, in journaling, in tags, in paper clips, and whatever. So give it a try, see what you think. Go watch Nick's channel. Um, don't forget to show her some love. Like, share, and subscribe if you will. If you want to follow me on social media and see what I do with regards to paper clips or tags or whatever or drawing every day, because I do do art every day. Um, and you want to, and or you want to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the art groups over on Facebook, click on the link tree list of links, which is in the description below. My happy mail address is down there too. You'll find a bunch of stuff about me. I'm all over the place. Um, anyway, check it out. See what you think. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the description below. And above all, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.